Hello everyone, the Lord be with you. And also with you. I want to start today by praying the collect for today and then the COVID collect. O oh Lord, Lord, all, all good, good things, things come, come from you. Inspire, inspire us by your grace, grace that we may discern those things that are good and by your power perform them through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, bless the world. Give it wisdom at this time. Grant us relief and release. Be with those who are ill and bless the carers fighting this pandemic. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Today is World Environment Day, and I know that there are many of us at St. Thomas who care about the environment, and I'm certainly one of them, as it's Tamsin. We recycle and we reuse, but we also find some of our greatest times of peace and joy when we contemplate God's bounty, whether we are in the berg or the bush or by the sea, or even just quietly in our own gardens. Often our eyes are opened most widely to God's magnificence when we come close to his creation and we worship him even more passionately. I think of the words of Psalm 96, let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. I wonder how he will judge us, us human beings to whom he gave stewardship of the world. Actually, I don't really wonder. 
I'm sure we have fallen so far short in so many ways of what he wants us to be. I was speaking on the telephone the other day to one of our oldest parishioners. She's in her 90th year. And she said she was feeling a bit shut down, shut off, shut in, as she's not allowed out of her retirement home. But she was still keeping her eyes on the Lord. Then she said, it's all our fault, isn't it? This coronavirus. We're all so greedy. The theme for this year's World Environment Day is biodiversity, and it's been given the title, Time for Nature. In a short space of time, we've had bushfires, devastating great swathes of land in Brazil, in the United States, in Australia, and here in South Africa. We've had plagues of locusts in East Africa, and now we have a global disease pandemic. We seem to have forgotten how interdependent all life is, how God created all life to exist together. But it's human beings who've cut down the forests, encroached on wildlife habitats, intensified agriculture, and accelerated climate change. I read that it would take 1.6 Earths currently to meet the demands that humans make of nature each year. And the human population continues to grow despite coronavirus. What will be next? Is God speaking to us? I'm going to read today's gospel reading. It's from Mark chapter 12 from the 35th to the 70, 37th verse. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, how is it that the teachers of the law say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The Jewish people of Jesus' time would have found this a straightforward message but it may be a bit harder to understand, and I'm not going to go into any detail now. But the essence of it is that Jesus is not rejecting the title Son of David, because that was a title frequently used of the Messiah. What he is saying is that it was insufficient. He is more than that, so much more than that. He is Lord. He is our Lord. He is our God. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. As we recognise Jesus as our Lord and our God, perhaps we can be more mindful of our commission to be his representatives here on earth to be his stewards or custodians, protectors of the earth, not its destroyers. As we go into a time of prayer, I'm going to use part of the liturgy provided by the Green Anglicans. And so let us pray. Father God, <coughs> your fertile earth is slowly being stripped of its riches Open our eyes to see. Holy Spirit, your living waters are slowly being choked with chemicals. Open our eyes to see. Christ, our Lord, your clear air is slowly being filled with pollutants. Open our eyes to see. Father God, your people are suffering and your creatures are slowly dying. Open our eyes to see. God, our Maker, so move us by the wonder of our creation. 
you may repent and care more deeply. So move us to grieve the loss of life. That we learn to cherish and protect your world. Creator of the universe, we pray in gratitude and praise. You were there at the beginning of all things, shaping our world and preparing it for us. You have provided the mountains and the trees, the waters and the earth. Help us to be caretakers of your gifts, protecting the land from abuse and ready to share it with all in need. Show us how to use our science and technology in creative ways. Deepen our awareness of our connectedness with all your creation so that future generations will also enjoy every blessing. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's share the grace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. And we pray together the prayer for Africa. God bless Africa, protect our women and children, Transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Lord God, in this season of fear and uncertainty, as we face the threat of the coronavirus, grant us the wisdom and determination to walk in one another's shoes, the confidence and the humility to draw closer to you and to those affected. Empower us to pastor those who are ill, to weep for the dead, to support the healers, and to care for and love one another. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love and whom you pray for, now and always. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lots of love to all of you. See you again someday, maybe not too soon. Keep well and keep safe. Goodbye.